folks. We are at Evergreen Creek today, Vassar, Michigan. And we're doing minute starts uh, between the groups here today. So got a little bit of time here. And on my left, I didn't know this at the time, but Chad Love, he was the, uh, the winner of our class here today in the 35 plus C division. So congrats, Chad. Turn one clean. Looks like I'm sixth currently, I think. Oh, and we have a pony down. I thought for sure I was going to get collected up in that. I thought I was going to fall right on top of the pony there, but was able to able to check up in time to uh, make that turn. So today was an 11 mile loop here at Evergreen, so had a lot to offer. Um, you had the grass track, a lot, a lot of single track, a lot of tight single track, lots of roots. I think, uh, I think if there's anything you can say about this place, man, it beat me up. My wrist hurt after the race, my butt hurt after the race. Um, just a lot of, uh, you're always getting jarred with those roots and, and whatnot, at least I was, but uh, it was it was gnarly out here at times. Um, a lot of fun though man it was my first time riding here and um, you know didn't know what to expect I watched uh, watched Steve Broussard's uh, YouTube video from 2017 when it was here so it kind of gives you a little bit of taste but until you're actually out there experiencing it you know you really don't know what's what's in store is my GoPro camera worked today. Um, I tested it out last week at Log Road and had no issues with it. Um, I think I, I think I had a bad scan disc is what it ultimately ended up being I believe. But um, so we get we got the entire first lap. Um, this video is longer than, than most of them I put out because I'm going to show you the entire first lap here. Um, the lap happens to be 11 miles versus, you know, typically five to six mile hair scramble loops that we run. So uh, it took, took longer to get through. So got a little over 50 minutes today to get through uh, this single track course here. was uh you know I was off to a good start and I was, I was becoming frustrated here because oh of the bottleneck because your good start is eliminated everybody just catches back up here. <laughs> that point I think one rule suggestion I might recommend I'm curious how others feel about this but you know two of the larger classes every week week in and week out are the 35 plus C and then the 24 to 34 plus C and they start back to back in the lineup and you know 35 plus C has got the buddy class that starts behind us and I'm just wondering do you guys think it would help alleviate some of the congestion if we put that buddy class in between. It's a small class. If we put that in between the 24 to 34, 35 plus C, uh, just to 
just to space some of these riders out a little bit more at the beginning of the race. And, um, just a thought. I don't know if it would help, but it's an idea. I know some of those buddy riders are coming through us fairly quickly. You know, I'm usually the top top third of, of our class, and I've got buddy riders, you know, catching me a couple minutes in a lot of times. So um, may help some of the may help alleviate some of that congestion. But I'm curious what everybody else thinks about that. I didn't realize it at the time, but you know this this section that we're riding here on um, before we cross the road was probably the easiest riding that you're going to see all day. So you know you got got just some nice grass track, nice flowing trails here, no roots to bounce you around, and then as soon as you cross the road, you know it's uh, whooped out trails tight single track it wasn't overly tight I mean it still had great flow to it so kudos to everybody that put this event on and laid out that trail because that was a lot of work um, to put put this many miles of trail out it's impressive so hats off to everybody that had a had a part in that because it was a lot of fun to ride it, nothing you can do about the roots just the way it is I did that a few times today too, bouncing off trees like that. It, it was one of those days where it just happened. I just had to kind of sit and wait my turn here. It wasn't a lot of room, but as soon as there was an opportunity to, a little bit of space snuck through there. I think those were two of the, two of the riders in the group in front of us in the, tw in the 12 class, which is 24-34. I got around there. So through the first lap, when well I the first lap, the first scoring shoot was midway through this lap, about 20 minutes in, I want to say. And I was fourth through there um, during the first lap. And then I kind of steadily uh, dropped back because some of the faster riders in our group, uh, you know, made up that gap from the beginning there, and things worked themselves out. So I ran eighth um, the majority of the day. Um, my next to last lap, towards the very end of the lap, I got stuck in a 
bridge crossing, so I crossed the bridge and there was a rut that I swear was about seat deep and I don't know, wasn't looking ahead, didn't see it, and I went smack right into it, man. And I was able to get out with the assistance of uh, one of the track workers there. But man, it took a lot of energy out of me. I was slipping and falling in the mud. And uh, I was running, keeping pretty good pace till then. And uh, it really slowed me down. So the, the last lap was six, six minutes slower than my previous lap. And um, I was feeling really pretty good. I felt like I was almost getting stronger until that point. And it just ate me up. So I probably lost, you know, two or three minutes getting the bike unstuck and then all the energy expended from that so I think it cost me eighth place for sure I ended up ninth on the day I I, uh, I, I was passed within like the last quarter mile um, of the uh, track on my last on my fourth lap and uh, you know he was he was coming fast and I, I didn't even think he was in my class because he was coming so fast and uh, let him go and then I was like crap he was in my class but uh still overall a day ninth place finish here I was I was happy with that so I think we had 31 riders 30 or 31 riders on the day so big big turnout here um, I think everybody was excited to see this place because it's only run every few years so I think that ooh, <laughs> that's a bad day <laughs> Uh, bike in the creek back there, but I think everybody was, uh, you know, I think that attributed to the big turnout. Everybody wanted to see this place and still run occasionally. This was track of the year last time they hosted a hair scramble back in 17. And uh, I'd have to say it's in my top two for sure this year so far for me personally. I think Redneck Ranch and I think uh, Evergreen have kind of set the set the bar for me as far as you know a hair scramble track. They were both very challenging. You know what? think Fredneck back to that race it was hot dusty and sandy and uh, this we had some moisture in the ground and it was slippery and full of nice tight single track but uh, you know I think they were both pretty unique tracks from a lot of the places that we run and I think that kind of attributes to uh, the appeal at least for me um, a little bit different change of pace so it turned out to be a good line choice <laughs> you never know when you uh, when you set out on those little adventures but that one worked out I don't think this guy's in my class. It's hard to tell because his sticker is underneath of his his goggle strap there. So it was hard to tell. I think he was a row 12 rider. So I was just trying to get past him. He's, he's holding me up a little bit, but it's some of the stuff it's hard to get out of the way, but I'm just letting him know I was there. This is a little bit of a moto track that we had here, just small, not a lot to it. 
but this is uh, this is the start of the mini class in the morning. So the AM session, this is where they started from. It was probably a half mile away as the crow flies from where the big bike started, maybe a little more. I like to call this the uh, whoop section. So we got into the woods here, if I can make it without hitting a tree. Um, you know, nice flowing trail, but uh, a lot of a lot of whoops developed through here throughout the day. Even even to start the day, there were there were some in here already. So nice nice trail layout, but uh, nothing <laughs> nothing came easy here at Evergreen, man. Even uh, even the nice trail had had whoops to it. It was uh, physically demanding for for me today. But um, I think the last two weeks I've had had some bad luck maybe as far as coming through for my white flag right before the leader takes the checkered. So last last race of polka dots I ended up running two hours and 55 minutes I think and I, I think I was actually the last one to finish that. I came through directly in front of the leader and today I was over three hours and part of that attributes to the you know the long loop but uh, I was at I think three hours and five minutes, and there was guys I saw finishing, just, you know, 15 minutes later than what I did. Even I think so. It was a, a long day on the bike. I had over, you know, 40, 44. I don't know, close to 40 miles in anyway. I think um, at, at race speed and bouncy conditions, it was uh, it was a handful. here man that got extremely deep my foot pegs were digging in there and it uh second lap through there man you didn't want to go through it i think i think i uh, hit it the second lap and it was way deeper than what it was there and then i found some alternative lines after that on either on the outside or the inside of that particular section there so it got pretty pretty dug out back it is 
really is awesome trail, man. You look at the look at the pines here, right through here. It's nice flowing trail, man. Well laid out. Getting ready to come through the first scoring shoot here. Like I said, this was midway through the lap, so I'll show you the remainder of the lap until we get back to the start line. Uh, so coming through right here, I was still sitting fourth place in the class currently. was a pretty awesome opportunity to, to ride all this land that we were able to to use for this event. I mean, I believe there were three different landowners um, that allowed, allowed us to put on the hair scramble here. So always, always very grateful, um, you know, when people allow events on their property because, um, you know, it's a lot, a lot of fun, but there's a lot of, a lot of work and probably other things that we don't even think about that go into it, um, allowing us to ride on, on property like this. So thanks to everybody that made this happen again.
this this track there's nice open stretches here you know it had some real tight single track um, you know but it had enough of these open stretches where you could get some air flowing on your body to stay cool it wasn't extremely hot today I think that helped too um, you know I think that that attributes to the nice layout there is you do have these real tight sections but then it's followed up by a nice section where you can open it up a little bit get some air on your bike and your body and cool yourself down so it really really helped if it had been hot today it was humid but if it had been hot this would have been even more challenging of a ride say I'm not used to seeing blue ribbon and blue arrows and I would catch it out of the corner of my eye and I, I kept thinking the blue was like you know somebody staying up on a trail or, or a, a Yamaha out here and I could catch a glimpse of blue out of the corner and then I said oh no it's just just some ribbon just an arrow it threw me threw me for a loop a couple times never caused any issues but it's just uh, unusual to see the blue blue tape versus you know the yellow or orange Kind of see how jarring some of this stuff was. A lot of that trail. I mean, my I mentioned this earlier, but my wrist and like my bones, my forearms and stuff just ached after this race for a couple hours. And uh, these guys right here cheering me on every lap, man. Um, little things, but man, it makes a difference when you're <laughs> when you're just struggling to continue late in the race, and you got guys there cheering you on. It uh, lifts you up a little bit, gives you that little extra going. And it was about this point in the first lap where I started to feel fatigue. You know, I was came out pretty hard and uh, 
I think at this point I started to realize, all right, it's time to start pace, pacing myself at this point. Just uh, calm it down, ride a little smoother, not so hard. This is going to be a long race, and I can't continue to push this hard for this long.
just enough there that it shot me off a little bit sideways right there. And then, of course, terrible clutch work. Stall the bike. <laughs> Back at it. It's the little things like that that wear you out, though. I had no problem with this log all day long, except for the lap that you get to see here on video, of course, so. Not quite enough speed and momentum there. That section right there, man, got worse throughout the day. Those routes were nasty. If you took the wrong line, I think left was definitely better there, but I was forced to go right uh, at one point there. Man, it was slick, slick and nasty. Just a huge big root ball there that were exposed. I know I specifically remember thinking about this point in the race, kind of when we're down here in some of this lower stuff where it's kind of gnarly and nasty. I remember thinking, I don't know if I can, if I can do this for two and a half hours. <laughs> uh, I, I did. I toughed it out, but man, I was those thoughts were going through my mind for sure at this point in the race. if anybody runs a uh, steering stabilizer. I do not, and I talked to somebody after the race, and he said that makes a big difference when riding you know, some of the, the rough stuff like this. So I'm curious if anybody out there does have experience with steering stabilizer, let me know if, uh, if it is worth the money, if it benefits you, because uh, that's something I'm uh, probably gonna consider moving forward, I think. why this little section right here reminded me of the uh, of polka dots as you right before you were coming into the enduro section just kind of it looked almost exactly the same to me and then you take a left out of it just like this and I was like kind of had some deja vu when I was coming through here about every lap there for about a couple hundred yards
Well, that didn't go as planned. <laughs> that log kind of got flipped up in front of me there, and I don't know what clipped it. But uh, that wasn't very graceful going through there. That uh, this this became worse and worse throughout the day as we progressed too. But I think that was probably my worst through that section. And then I don't know what I'm doing here, man. Mr. Uh, Mr. Russell gets around there. It looks like he was a uh, third place finish on the day for Steve. So it's the, I think I I talked to him. That was his first podium. So he was pretty ecstatic after the race to. Uh, to come away with a third place there. So he got around me there in my little root mishap that you guys saw. section right here man smoothest part of the track all day <laughs> I just couldn't get quote quite woed up in time nice and cooling though Telling my voice there as compared to the first few times that I came up on riders. Much calmer now. I think uh, the initial intensity of the start is over. The adrenaline's worn off. And uh, like I said, I'm just beginning to pace myself here. And I think you can tell in my riding demeanor there as I got around him. Much, much calmer than I was earlier, earlier in the race.
so next weekend, you know, we're gonna be heading to Battle Creek. We've got two left. We got Battle Creek, and then they rescheduled Portland, so we've got that one coming up to close out the year. But uh, and Battle Creek's another one that the routes just beat me up. I you know I've ridden that the last couple of years, and it takes a it takes a toll on me too. So another rough track coming up next week. So just looking to heal up a little bit before then so I can get another full race in is the goal here at Battle Creek coming up. It's, uh, it's Braden's favorite track so he's looking forward to going to Battle Creek. He really enjoys riding there. He, he enjoys the, the moto there and uh, has some of his better better races at Battle Creek so I know he's looking forward to it. Um, the girls really like it too. They uh, they were there in the 50cc class and you know Evergreen had an awesome 50 track uh, a lot of single track uh, through through some pines and stuff and uh, came out of some grass track to allow for some nice passing but a real nice setup for them a little bit larger track than they get to ride a lot of times so great layout like I said and uh, they also like to go to Battle Creek as well they also have a great 50 track there as well. Got a little a few jumps there. The kids like to think they're getting some air sometimes anyway, so they they like that. Changes it up a little bit from what they typically get to ride. So we're looking forward to, to going to Battle Creek next week for sure. Tell you what, I, I the 50 class, I don't know if you guys get to go watch that in the morning at all but uh that class has really really grown you know from two years ago when they first started started doing that and uh you know we went from having four to five riders the first year to probably you know eight to ten last last year towards the end of the year we started to pick up a few in numbers and uh you know we had 19 1950s out there this last last go around so makes it uh much tougher for scoring for sure so they're doing, those ladies are doing a great job those bikes are, are zooming through their five and six at a time sometimes and they're, they do manual scoring for that division so I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody that, that puts the time in to do that because that's that's quite the undertaking with with that many bikes out there and as fast as they come through in big groups um, especially when they get held up in the woods and they all come through in a group of ten um, you know I don't think there was a single bike missed in scoring last week, so it was awesome. So the bridge jump, I did not do the bridge jump. It's off to the right there. I took the, the bridge, not the bridge jump, and uh, I did see some videos of some people doing the bridge jump. Uh, you know, earlier today and it did look like it was very doable but uh, wasn't in the cards for me by no means um, I saw uh, saw I think a video of Talon hitting it and uh, a couple others and they made it look pretty easy but uh, it probably would have been disastrous if I would have tried it so we're uh, coming back around the road here back on the uh, side of the road where we actually started the race. So we've got another, you know, probably three quarters of a mile to a mile of grass track here before we loop back up to where uh, we actually started the race here. So we're coming, coming to a close here for the, the one lap around Evergreen Creek. If I look at my lap times, you know, this lap would have been roughly 52 minutes, it looks like. Uh, my lap two, my, my first full lap was, you know, 51 and change. 
and then lap three when I got hung up in this huge rut and lost probably three minutes I was at 55 almost 56 minutes there so I'm guessing that probably would have been about 53 minutes so I was had I not got stuck in that rut I would have maintained a relatively the same pace and then lap four I dropped off significantly I was at 58 minutes there um, but uh great day and like I said this is probably probably right up there I'm gonna have to do some thinking on this but I would say between so far this track at Evergreen and Fred Neck probably my top two for track of the year for sure at this point so we make this right hander and off to the left here this is our starting starting line over here so this is we're just coming back into uh, turn one right now so thanks for watching guys and uh, I will see you next week at Battle Creek.